to look at the Lord more during this time than ever. It's one thing to look at the headline news to know, you know, what to prepare for. And that's the reason why we have all this uh, uh, live streaming and all that because of the announcement. We have to be, to be kept abreast of what is happening, but not the details. Not what is happening down here, what is happening to this celebrity, what is happening to this person over here. And, and I mean, do you have time for celebrities? Do you have time to follow them? It's amazing how people have time. People are feeling time is so slow. Uh, they want this coronavirus thing to be over. And, and, and many people who are workaholics right now, especially they are suffering. They have, I mean, they are some, some of them don't know what to do at home because they are, they are such workaholics. You know, they, they need to do something. And when they are quarantined, whoa, that is suffering. <laughs> Amen. It is like time is moving so slow all over the world. If only they can accelerate time to the end of this coronavirus thing. Right? What about space? Space is definitely restricted. You can't just freely travel anywhere anymore. <laughs> Can you? No. What is happening? Both time and space are being constrained. You are constricted in time and you are still taking time for things that don't really matter. <laughs> Preach it, Pastor Prince. Amen. Spend your time for things that really can feed you, strengthen you, bless your family, amen. Bless your community, amen. And we're taking time. It's okay to watch dramas and, you know, watch Netflix and things like that, but really time is constrained. And before you know it, you're tired and you have not spent time in the Word, which is bread indeed. You have not spent time with the Lord, which is life and drink indeed, amen. 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 Labor not for things, for things that does not satisfy. Labor for the meat, for the food that He will give to you that endures unto everlasting life. That's real food. Amen. In John 6, we have a beautiful uh, uh, story here of Jesus multiplying the loaves and fishes. And many of you know that. Uh, this story is, is a well-known story, but I just want to call your attention to something here. Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. Sit down, much grass. Does that remind you of something? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Now notice that the word sit down. If you look up the Greek Sit down is the word recline. So remember this, position before provision. Position before provision. But what position is it, Pastor Prince? Must I really be in a place where God will be so pleased with me that He will supply me? And No, no, no. The position is just nothing more than rest. I want to provide, but I cannot provide for people if they are running around. Amen? Running around ragged, stress, looking for answers. I can only help them if they sit down. Mary sat down. Martha was busy with her hands and feet. Nothing wrong with that. Amen? But when you sit down and you receive the supply, then your hands will know what to do. Then your feet will know where to go. And you'll do the right thing at the right time because you have sat down. And I love this because... Uh, it says, now there was much grass in the place. The Holy Spirit had to mention that detail. If you're a sheep and you lie down in green pastures, that means what? You are lying down in the midst of abundance of food. For you, okay, it's like, um, sit down in the abundance of rice, <laughs> ramen, chapati, bread, I don't know what's your favorite, but uh, burgers all around you. Amen. He makes me lie down in the midst of burgers. <laughs> I need not worry about supply. I need not rush out there with all the rest of the people, like their chickens, like chickens with their heads cut off. All right, grabbing every toilet paper I can find because I'm, sh I'm sure that he can supply me toilet paper. If he feeds the birds of the air and clothes the lilies of the field, I'm sure he knows how to clothe me. 
and I'm sure that he knows how to keep me clean. <laughs> Amen? So what's my part? What's my part? My part is to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, not my righteousness, his righteousness, which is a gift, and all these things, plus toilet papers, will be added unto you. Okay, so, so let's not panic, let's not worry, let's not, you know, let's stop, shh, sit down. Every fresh challenge should cause you to sit down. Position before provision. Amen? Look at Psalms 91. He who dwells, Yashaf, sit down in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So the very first thing you do is not just claim, I claim Psalms 91, I claim this, I claim that. It, but you are doing it in stress. You are doing it worried. This is not uh, something, uh, 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 you know, you, you use like, uh, okay, I've, I've said my Psalms 91, huh? God, don't forget. It's not a matter of that. It's, 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 a, it's a relationship. I, I pause and, and ask myself, am I seated or am I in stress? You know, every morning if you can, spend time with the Lord and just, I, I, I like to say this to the Lord. Father, I thank you that my son Justin, my daughter, my wife, myself, I also pray for all of you, okay? At another time. <laughs> but when, when I'm lacking in time, I pray for, my, for protection for my family and myself. I say that thank you that every one of us is now in Christ risen at your right hand, Father. And I stopped for a while. Thank you, Father, we are in Christ risen, safe and secure. One time, I, I, the Lord sort of opened my eyes and I saw this in, in uh, Ephesians 6, that we stand in the evil day. Singular, the evil day. Stand in the evil day. That means it's short. But good days. He that will love life and see good days. Days are plural. Evil day. Good days. Evil day. Good days. Evil day. So this coronavirus thing, evil day. Good days. But the promise is not for the world. The promise is for God's people. He that will love life and see good days. Right? It says, watch your tongue. Amen? Watch your tongue. Friends, the Lord has spoken to us. He says, Psalms 91, surely, not maybe, not perhaps, surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. This is definitely a perilous, a dangerous pestilence, right? Surely He shall deliver you. Not maybe, surely. Amen. In fact, of all the verses in Psalms 91, that's the one He punctuates, He starts off with, surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. Let's rest in that. Amen. The Lord gave me this uh, a, a picture of uh, the Temple of Solomon being the church in its glorious days. There were chambers attached to the Temple of Solomon, which is the corporate body of Christ. The priests in those days live in those chambers. And it's like all of us, uh, you know, we, we, we live so near the dwelling of God. How near can you get when you're at the Father's right hand? So the first floor is, is a storage of grain, wine, and oil. And it seems like... Uh, when the Lord first gave this to me, I, I didn't realize how much that first floor is going to be open up in the first part of the year. Amen. Amen. The grain, the wine, and the oil. And we know that for us, it's not just physical. You know, when, when God uh, gave, when, when, the, when the Lord spoke that blessing through Isaac upon his son, Jacob, he thought it was Esau he was blessing. Remember that? And, and the blessing was this, God gave you the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth. And then he says this, and plenty of grain and wine. But do you think for one moment, he's talking about plenty of uh, grain like to make bread to eat and oil, as in olive oil? Because the land is abundant uh, of, of grain, wine, and oil. In fact, uh, Esau would definitely live in a place where they have grain, wine, and oil. So obviously, it's something spiritual and the Father blessed him and says, God give you, my son, the firstborn blessing. The blessing that all of us are, are, are craving for is the firstborn blessing. Can I have a good amen? In fact, God, God wants His people to crave for that. In fact, God despised what Esau did because Esau despised his birthright. He despised the firstborn blessing. And, and the firstborn born blessing, the uniqueness is this, plenty of grain and wine. 
plenty of grain and wine. It cannot be natural. So that's the communion right there, the Lord's Supper. So God is opening and God is saying, all this evil in the world is nothing that the grain and the wine and the oil cannot cover. Amen. Amen? And the oil, we've touched on the oil. The oil in the Bible always represents the Holy Spirit. The anointing of the oil is the power of the Holy Spirit applied. And uh, we, we've done that by anointing even the oil, which is symbol. And don't despise the, the physical symbol, because even in the New Testament, let him call for the elders of the church, the Bible says, those who are sick. And let him pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Amen? Amen? And that's New Testament. That's the church age. They still use physical oil. It's not the oil itself. It's the power of the Holy Spirit they are trusting in to get the job done. Amen? To bring healing to the sick person. Praise God. And uh, the oil is also uh, representative of the power of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible tells us that we are kept by the power of God. We are protected by the Holy Spirit. Amen. In fact, the word used is sealed. Sealed with the Holy Spirit. You know, you know what's a seal? A seal in those days, when they sealed something, like Jesus' uh, tomb was sealed, the rolling stone was sealed with a Roman seal. No one would dare to break that seal. That seal means it protects whatever is inside from theft, from being hurt, from injury. So a seal is a protection. And uh, God is reviving this truth again. I think uh, it's a precious truth. Amen. It's something so precious to God's heart. Jesus says, do this in remembrance of me. So you know what? I got to speak God's language of love. I cannot, I cannot speak my language of love. If God feels that this is how He feels love, this is how He feels respected and honored and remembered and appreciated, we're going to do it. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. This is our firstborn blessing. Let's seize upon it. Amen. If you were blessed by this video, Please feel free to comment on what spoke to you, hit the like button, or share this with a friend who needs encouragement. Don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on any of my latest videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.